I'm Sławek Grzonkowski. I'm a senior staff data scientist at Tenable. I'm at this position for the last two and a half years. Before that, I worked uh, in uh, security response division of uh, Symantec and later Broadcom. So that was like nine years. And yeah, before that, it's like, yeah, ancient past. Uh, I was working in some research institute and I was doing a PhD. That was actually, uh, yeah, the reason why I came to Ireland and now I'm here, uh, 18 years. Uh, so in today's talk, I will uh, talk about my uh, findings of analyzing uh, a large number of threat reports. So usually, uh, people put lots of effort into the threat reports, and I don't think I have to explain why this is important, why threat reports are important. And I wanted to always uh, understand, like, what's the real impact? Like, there may be some fantastic threat report presenting something, and then what's actually the impact, uh, except the publicity? Are actually people reacting to that? Are people updating their software? Uh, are they doing anything? And then I thought that it would be actually useful to uh, make some small project to do that and then share the findings. Uh, that could help in preparing the or working on best practices and maybe uh, also influence how this cybersecurity knowledge is shared with organizations. So my goals in this work were to uh, use some scientific approach, some way of evaluating how we can uh, actually measure if a given threat report is impactful or not. Um, in this case, I'm doing some like retrospective work. This is like uh, I will analyze something that has already happened uh, to have the full view. And this is like data driven and uh, it's based a lot on information that is available publicly. So others could also use it, they could uh, reproduce it and uh, perhaps come up with some next version, maybe something better. And uh, as I mentioned, okay, so reports are publicly available uh, that I'm using, so they were crawled and I will give you a bit more details about them in a moment. And then uh, I also wanted to evaluate the impact on the enterprise side. So in this well, in, in this case, because I work for Tenable, this is evaluated on the Tenable side, how we actually see differences in uh, detections that, that we have. Now, uh, the data that was extracted and collected uh, contains various information, such as CV ID, maybe a report date, uh, the title, and then uh, information about uh, what's, what's inside because Tenable focuses on vulnerabilities, not like on finding uh, threat actors, but vulnerabilities. I'm cross-checking this information that I find in the reports with vulnerabilities. Uh, so this is slightly different. Like the Tenable view of the world is that they see the world and then they see where are the weaknesses and what should be addressed. Uh, but they don't see how these weaknesses, or Tenable doesn't see the, how these weaknesses are being exploited. Like that's outside of the business scope. Uh, so I hope that here at least I'm objective because uh, these threat reports, like they don't come from Tenable. Tenable has different, uh, di different objective. It's observe vulnerabilities, report them, help people to remediate them. Uh, so, because of that, I can see what was detected and where I can get some timeline and I can get very detailed information about vulnerabilities. Uh, so, uh, in this work, uh, I basically uh, obtained and uh, extracted data from 2,264 threat reports, like initially, and they are, between, they are dated between 2010 and 2024. I don't have any specific, didn't have any specific rules to exclude any threat reports, just take them all. And uh, because I have data about CVs, I was cross-checking uh, impact with CVs. 
and I could see that there were 498 mentions of CVEs in this report. Sometimes uh, there were reports that had actually quite often there were reports mentioning multiple CVEs or a CV could be mentioned multiple times. So all these got, uh, not, of course, processed and deduplicated. So in this time frame, I observed 1,316 CVs uh, exploited, and, uh, but 449 of them were unique. So uh, yeah, so some thread reports, of course, uh, mentioned CVs that were already known from other reports. So in this time frame, I was checking, like MITRE published 256,000 uh, CVEs. So if we see that there are only like 449 unique CVs, that gives us something like um, the chance that a CV is actually exploited is like one in 570. So then I also start thinking about like, uh, that this is actually quite low. So you have lots of CVEs, but then only one in 570 is actually exploited. So I was also interested like, okay, so what's the mot motivation for some average Joe to actually uh, update uh, his machine and uh, yeah because the like okay these are also chances that they are used in uh, ATPs uh, so yeah so that, that, that's that, that, that's interesting like if people are actually influenced by a report or actually people who manage other people if they are intru influenced by reports to uh, make some uh, patches right and do these people react So here is a like high level summary that I wanted to start with. So we can see like various years and then the threat reports. Uh, in, so first column is the, the year, then there is the threat report, then uh, we have distinction between uh, CVEs in reports about APTs and ransomware. And then we can see that uh, how many CVEs were mentioned actually in each year and how many CVs were used in ransomware that was reported uh, by these groups. Uh, so we can see actually that, okay, the, the number of threat reports is growing, which is good. So we are more and more aware of various threats. Then we can see that uh, the use uh, of CVs is also growing. Uh, it's actually kind of proportional. And then what is interesting, like the, the use of uh, CVEs for ransomware, like it looks like it seriously started somewhere in 2018 and before it happened, but it was uh, just on case by case basis. It wasn't that, that popular. Uh, so this gives some rough idea. And then as you can see, there were lots of threat reports and uh, a lot of work that I had to do uh, to complete this work the way I wanted was to, that I had to actually manually uh, analyze certain trends and make an objective decision. So uh, as I explained in a moment, I actually focused on year 2023 because that was the last year that was completed uh, before uh, this conference. And it was that, yeah, the, the, most, the most recent that I had full. So I mostly focused on what is here. So you can see there were 92 distinct CVEs in that year. Now to give you some more data insights, uh, these are the CVs that like, during this time frame of 14 years were mostly used and this is in APTs and there is in ransomware gangs or gr groups and we can see uh, that there are some like leaders and actually top three from ransomware were also used uh, in other ATP activities. Like I believe one of them is uh, from some uh, Intel active uh, monitoring technology, another one, I think this one is uh, log4j, and this one is from Office. Yeah. And then what is important is actually how vulnerability scanning works on the tenable side. And I won't uh, spend too much time here, I'll just give you a brief uh, like explanation that Tenable is looking for vulnerabilities to map the whole like world, where are the weaknesses, and this can be done in actually three ways. So there is this authenticated scan where Tenable has credentials of the machine that is scanned and can log in and run various plugins that normally wouldn't be available 
Then there is also agent-based scan where Tenable doesn't have the login, but there is some agent and it's a similar access. And there are uh, unauthenticated scans where basically we have the external view of the machine and certain plugins cannot be run because we don't have the access. And then vulnerability detection, this, I think this is quite standard. So it's signature based or behavioral based. So again, uh, we can observe how something is behaving or just get a signature and find some, some pattern. And the last thing that I wanted to mention is, uh, here is actually scanning, because that's really important. Because as I said, uh, Tenable doesn't like tra uh, track uh, how I if the vulnerabilities are exploited. But we can see that. Uh, Okay, there, there, there is scanning, which is like scheduled. So let's say I could scan my website, let's say uh, on Monday every week, and there is on demand. So this happens when I would be afraid that maybe my website is vulnerable and I want to make sure it's not. So uh, once we have these kind of detections from Tenable, uh, we can actually estimate what's happening. So if we see that this number of these detections that we get from Tenable is actually going down, uh, it means that people are patching their software to mitigate the threat or uninstalling it. This is just yeah, th these two options. That, that's why it's going down. And if we see that the number of detection is going up, it means that people started like increasing the scan coverage and now they detect more or maybe they started looking for certain vulnerabilities, so they added some new scan profiles, or maybe there was a new plugin that was released, and uh, that's why we see a spike. So what we were actually, like I was not noting in this research wasn't, like initially I was checking if the impact is like to increase or decrease the detections, but then I realized it's actually better just to measure if there is impact or if there is no impact. Uh, because uh, the fact that there is more detections, uh, it doesn't mean that there are more exploited targets. Yeah? So as I mentioned, the assumption was to use the year 2023 and beyond, because this is the last completed year, and uh, take a good sample, like representative sample of the data, and uh, assume that we have, okay, this extraction process is working as expected, and uh, that there are no bugs there, and I assume, I assume they are not. And we also should keep in mind that, okay, Tenable has these plugins. Some of them may be detecting multiple vulnerabilities. It's not that it's just one plugin, one vulnerability. It can be one plugin detecting uh, a number of vulnerabilities for some, some software, right? And then I wanted to stay objective. Okay, so uh, to recap, like the plan, was to take each threat report, then extract the, the if they are uh, CVs, so extract any of them, right? Match with software, uh, obtain the, the trend for this CV to see over time how the, the numbers were changing of, of what's detected, and then basically assess the impact or the lack of it. So this picture, maybe it's not best visible here, but you can see here it's like, much there are lo lots of lines here. You want the, he's got a laser pointer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so there, there are lots of uh, ver vertical lines here, and each of them is representing the, uh, some threat report. So these are all threat reports in year 2023. And then we have these spikes of detections. So here is just a big picture because there is like yeah, a number, like, like 60 of these lines, and then uh, 92 associated vulnerabilities. So I basically analyzed uh, each line like separately from the others for each CVE. So that was the actual work here. Uh, but I show you the uh, more details actually on these slides. So here maybe you can see better. I have some numbers of detections. Let's say this is like an example for Office. And here are two vulnerabilities. And I can see that, for example, there was a threat report published here. And this is the number of detections. Like it has no impact, like zero impact, right? But then we have another one here. And shortly after, there is a spike. 
So you would say, okay, this threat report probably had a spike, although it's maybe subjective because the number of detection was already growing here. Uh, then we have, I think maybe, yeah, if you, there are two threat reports here. Yeah, I can see there are three things here. There are two threat reports. So like I would say maybe they, they had some, some impact. Like here, again, uh, there is some threat report. And first, they were increasing vulnerabilities, and then they, they fell. So that could be also marked as an impact. And this is actually like manual work. And he, here we can see, OK, there is some threat report in the middle of some trend. But these numbers here were too small to actually say that it has an impact. And it was similar for, for, for here. So in this case, I would say it has no impact because the numbers are too small. Uh, then what was interesting was uh, the, the exploits for browsers. Again, uh, the contracts contrast here is not great, but I can tell you that like here is some threat report, and then I can see already some spikes and changes, and uh, it's similar for all, all of them. If like there is a browser-related exploit, uh, I can see that the number of detection is already, it's no more stable, it's changing a lot, and people are reacting, either patching the browsers or uh, increasing the scan coverage. Uh, here are some more examples. So here I have the uh, web servers. So web servers uh, that I observed that vulnerabilities in this given year were, I think, Apache, Nginx, and uh, I think there was also WebLogic. So in case of web servers, uh, there are also there are also always impactful reports. If there is, a, as there is a report mentioning something like, I don't know, Tomcat, Nginx, Apache, or uh, WebLogic, uh, I can see straight away that the number of detections is uh, around the date of the report is actually changing significantly. Uh, this example is showing WebLogic. So as I said, here is some threat report. And then I can see increases. Yeah? And here again, it was flat area. And then this is, there is a threat report. And then there is a big spike. Uh, because uh, it looks like it was a, a, a bigger event. Uh, here is another example, which is actually on the other side, because we had quite a few CVs for uh, Zimbra collaboration suits. And there were reports, and they are published here at the very end, you see. So these are the detections. That then the detections went down, and then pretty much, uh, maybe they were even great, but uh, there was no impact in 2023 of, of Zimbra. Looks like uh, it, it was already uh, patched by, by the customer, so I could say like this this threat report had like no impact. And then uh, going through all of these, all these 92 vulnerabilities, matching them with reports, matching them with software, and then processing and uh, looking at them. Uh, the, yeah, as I mentioned, like the end was like more uh, manual work. Then I came up with this table showing me the, the main software groups that I have here, and then uh, some selected software that didn't belong to any group, but had at least two vulnerabilities. And I could draw some more conclusions from this. So I could see, for example, if there is some report mentioning a CVE, data facts, for example, Linux kernel or macOS, this pretty much always has an impact. And people straight away will try to either scan for it, or patch it, or address it. So these reports had definitely a uh, good impact. If it's about Windows, then it depends. Uh, because, for example, there was some uh, exploit related to Windows search. And like surprisingly for me, like nobody actually, uh, it, yeah, it had no impact, basically. Nothing, nothing that I could see in detections. But if it was about Windows specifically, uh, operational system, then it had impact, or we had no data in some cases. And uh, another interesting uh, group of uh, software is uh, like, like enterprise software uh, that I observed from Microsoft. So uh, pretty much, if there is anything in the report about it, it gets updated except few cases. Like I was surprised again that uh, there was some CV in remote desktop, but then I didn't see any, 
uh, impact. Maybe it was addressed area, like in case of, of Zimbra. And uh, yeah, browsers, like definitely if there is some threat report and it mentions browsers, uh, this is something that gets uh, remediated very quickly. Uh, I mentioned already the, the web servers. And there are also some like development frameworks and tools like uh, Apache Strats, Apache Log4j, Spring MVC. So they, they are pretty much everywhere, these tools. So they are also getting updated quickly. And then there is this category called other, which is very often some free software or open source, source software. And I don't understand what, why, but very often uh, this is not something that is actually making impact, right? Like, much everyone who has Windows has WinRAR, and then you have bugs and CVEs in WinRAR, why it doesn't have an immediate impact. Yes? So I would need to maybe look back uh, maybe more and see that maybe it was addressed earlier. But uh, yeah, there was always still some group of people that we could detect, and they weren't uh, updating that, although they had these vulnerabilities reported. So if we go to one more, just summarization of uh, what I have here is that, OK, if it's like the broad category of Windows, then the chance that the report will have impact is like 50, almost 54%. If it's like enterprise software, it's going to like 70, almost 74. Browsers, OSs, servers like this gets updated very quickly. Uh, this has like 100% impact, at least in the observed year. Development tools are very high because everyone remembers log4j back. But, but then surprisingly, these other tools, they, they don't get uh, really any, or they don't get sufficient attention. So they are actually not getting updated, even if there are CVEs, and if the, even if there are reports, uh, threat reports mentioning them. So now, I already presented how it was uh, done, like that there were reports, there were CVEs, there was software, we have impact. So now we can actually reverse back and we can look uh, which threat reports actually had the biggest impact. Uh, so we could see, like these are the I have top 14, basically 14, because uh, I think I wanted everything that had uh, at least four, four CVEs reported. So I have this gathered this report, and I was able to calculate how many CVs it had, in total, how many of them were impactful. And then I could actually analyze it a bit more and see maybe why they were impactful, right? So actually, the, the report that I mentioned as the first one is interesting because it was actually published at the end of the year. So this is like November, and it still had like seven impactful CVEs that I could observe that they were actually making changes uh, in the detection, that people were reacting and patching what they had. The second one is also interesting uh, because, uh, as I said, I had some scripts to extract data uh, about CVEs and some context, but actually it's written in Chinese. Uh, so the CVEs were in English, but it still didn't matter. Uh, what mattered was that there are some CVs mentioned, and the CVs were about web browsers. Three of them were about web browsers, so they get patched very quickly, and we could see the impact. And the one that wasn't patched, it was about uh, uh, just some 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 other tool. Uh, I forgot the name now. Uh, uh, yeah, just 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 a tool which uh, is used like for hacking, so it couldn't be patched because it's not part of enterprise software. And, uh, and then, as we can see, this report mentions various countries, va various sectors. They come from small organizations, big organizations. She, there is no pattern. Uh, who actually is publishing? Uh, it looks, it's, it's matter. Uh, it's matter what's actually what there. So. Uh, going slowly to my conclusions, is that out of the 60 reports that I analyzed uh, that mentions, uh, mentioned CVs, like we had data for 38 of them. Maybe the rest was for regions that there are not many customers, and we couldn't show the impact. And then we also could see that if a report mentions more CVs, it's going to be more impactful. And yeah, it's always the case. 
Like if you have many CVs, you'll be more impactful. But uh, yeah, that's worth mentioning as well. The reports that had the biggest impact, they were like uh, annual reports or some bigger reports covering many operations, not just one. Uh, they, they had much more. Uh, if there was actually ransomware involved, or if it was mentioning di strict, uh, like directly in the, in the title, some kind of like APT, ransomware, uh, it had higher impact. It was also uh, influencing the number of detections change more. And then, as I mentioned, uh, the, the region from the, where the report comes from, it didn't matter. Uh, in this, in this uh, classification, we see that it can come from anywhere, uh, very often from many smaller specialized organizations. And also, which was positive, like even if something is reported, like at the end of the year, it will still uh, and it's relevant, it will still affect it shortly. Uh, not affected, but remediated. So uh, there, was a, there would be also a question like why certain reports, they have, like, despite having great fundings, they don't get attention in the security community. And maybe like the case of Zimbra, maybe, you know, they are already patched. It was, it was already addressed and maybe there is no, no work to be done. Uh, or maybe this is in a region where there is no telemetry, or at the time the plugin wasn't developed yet. But yeah, from what I know, actually these plugins are developed quite quickly. And yeah, and then we came to the last part, which is uh, how to improve it. And yeah, I think it would be helpful to have actually some format, maybe like this mentioned earlier uh, sticks, maybe that's a good way to, to, to actually spread this information. Uh, and yeah, but then we would maybe need some centralized place where all these uh, files are going. So threat hunters or threat re researchers could access it uh, in an easier way. And actually, yeah, I think that that's about the unifying the, the threat reports. Uh, threat reports that would be actually interesting. But uh, yeah, I would like actually to conclude with a positive note, which is that uh, it looks like uh, okay. We know that many reports are like sometimes badly written. They are focusing more on mar marketing, hard to read, don't answer questions. I think it was mentioned yesterday, uh, or they. Uh, have some specific context uh, or aud audience that they want, but it looks like uh, it, 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 at the end of the day, it, it doesn't matter because there are tools, they extract it automatically and we can see impact of all type of reports. Even if it's written in Chinese, but it mentions some CVs in the appendix, it looks like it still can have actually some impact. So that's positive, but it would be much nicer if, yeah, if, if, if there is some common publishing format, right? So I think that's all from my side. I don't know if you have questions or if you have time for questions.